Okay, it's Jeff here with the second in our series of industry profiles. So we're going to take some, uh, some industries to think about in terms of application for the 2022 uh, economics papers. One area that examiners are really keen to stress ahead of those papers is they want their students to showcase their knowledge of the subject and in particular add contextual knowledge to their answers. So the aim of this is to think about a little bit for a few minutes the nature of the cinema industry, which is a good example of an oligopoly. So the UK cinema market is best described as an oligopoly and that means that the industry, the market is dominated by a small number of businesses, the big three are Cineworld, Odeon and View. There's about uh, just under 5,000 cinema screens in the UK. Now that's down a little bit from 2019. And it may well be the case in 2021, 2022, when the data comes out, that there were fewer cinema screens in the UK, of course, because of the pandemic. Um, about three quarters of the screens are installed in multiplex cinemas. You've probably been to one. Uh, and the others are often smaller cinemas, often independents with just one or two screens. Clearly, the industry has been hit hard by the pandemic. So it's a good case study. OK, well, this is a, a look at uh, um, the cinema chains in the UK in 2019. Of course, this was the year before coronavirus. But you can see here that View, Odeon and Cineworld by the way, Cineworld also owns Picture House. They dominate the market with well in excess of 60, getting on for 66% of the market. But we have other chains, including Showcase, Everyman, Empire and The Light and Curzon. So the rule of thumb for an oligopoly uh, is that the leading five firms together have a combined market share of 60% or more. So clearly that's the case with cinemas in the UK and Ireland. It's about 70% owned and dominated by Cineworld, Odeon and View. There's often, however, a degree of local monopoly. So if you live in a small town, perhaps there may only be one cinema. Um, uh, if you, if you, even in a city, you get obviously localised uh, monopoly power. Here's a good example. Here's Leeds, one of my favourite cities. And uh, this is just using Google Maps. You can see the Cottage Road Cinema Independent one in Headingley. Spoke Home Cinemas in North Leeds, the View Cinema on Kirkstall Road, the Everyman Cinema in the centre there, uh, the View Cinema, which chooses you use in Leeds. And uh, there's a good example, there's one in Oakwood. So even in Leeds, you've got some competition, uh, a choice of venues. This is a breakdown. So multiplex dominate the sector. Quite interesting to think about this because in multiplexes, you, you kind of think there will be some economies of scale of operating, let's say, six or 10 or, or 20 screens. Just a few weeks back, we were doing our live revision events at Star City in Birmingham. I think it's one of the biggest cinemas going. Lots and lots of screens, some big ones as well. A great experience. But uh, a percentage of, of cinemas are traditional and mixed use. Now, interestingly, in terms of pricing, ticket pricing, uh, in recent years, the average price of cinema tickets has actually gone down. I'll show you a chart on that. In, in a second. Perhaps that is a reflection of the increased competition, obviously, from substitute services such as the online streaming services, Amazon Prime, Netflix and Disney Plus. Uh, so I'll look, I'll show you a chart showing the average price, but keep in mind, of course, there's a lot of variation of prices within the industry, within the market. And smaller chains, such as Everyman, they charge higher prices. Uh, nice comfy sofas and things, and they typically operate screens with, with much smaller capacity. So they go for a slightly higher margin per customer and a higher average revenue per user. And of course, you'll know from studying your economics that cinemas are a great example of price discrimination. Um, in other words, you're charging different prices to different people or different groups for watching essentially the same film. And of course, a lot of cinemas derive a lot of their revenue from ancillary services, such as advertising, food and drink, and increasingly things like um, multiplayer gaming and from conferences. Here's the chart. Uh, for many, many years, the average price of a cinema ticket in the UK was going up. And that's just in the last few years, it's come down again. So it has fallen from £7.49 in 2017 to £6.75 in 2020. Quite an interesting trend there. But of course, within that, You've got lots of variation. So here's uh, some view cinema prices in 2022. This is for standard tickets, of course, adult prices higher than that for teenagers and children. Senior citizens can get a discount as well, £1.50 discount 
on a ticket are those with a student card. Um, VIP, of course, you'd expect it to be higher. Of course, this is a good example of product differentiation. Those VIP seats fill up pretty quickly at Tutor Two events. <laughs> it's always the same price. But an adult VIP ticket, of course, is something like two pounds uh, fifty more expensive than the adult standard ticket, and, and likewise. So some good examples there of price discrimination. You might be able to explain why that happens. A lot of cinemas increasingly these days are finding ways of making commercial relationships uh, with uh, other organisations to encourage ticket sales, affiliate promotions uh, that offer cheaper tickets. So some good examples there. Odeon partnering with Makeup Movies, uh, View partnering with Club Lloyd's account holders, the people downloading the Little Plus app can get 21% of View tickets. Likewise, people sign up with Vitality Insurance and you can even pay for Club Cineworld tickets with your Tesco Club card vouchers. And of course, a lot of cinemas are moving away from single-use tickets towards the monthly subscription, including a good example there, Cineworld Unlimited, from £9.99 per month. Interesting just to be aware of this, you know, the ways in which uh, uh, cinema chains have to vary their pricing strategies in order to increase their total revenue. So in many ways, it's... It's a, you know, in economics, you often say there's a profit maximizing price or a revenue maximizing price, etc. Well, of course, there isn't in cinemas. You have a much more complicated ecosystem. And there's also concession pricing, price discrimination. This is some Cine World, so Babes in Arms prices. Uh, of course, the infants aren't paying for the tickets themselves. Let me make that, make that clear. Kids under 14, students get reduced tickets, senior citizens, so called grey pricing. And of course, uh, quantity pricing, family tickets. For two adults or two children and two children, including bundling, you can get some discounts off uh, off the food. It's thing with the view chain. I think the view chain standardised their ticket pricing in most locations a few years back. I'm not sure there's. I'm sure there's probably less. There's, it'll still exist, but I think there's less regionalised ticket pricing than there used to be. Well, the pandemic has had an enormous effect and continues to have an effect in many ways on cinema admissions and revenues, of course. So in 2020, there was just only 44 million admissions, most of those up to and including March, down from 176 million the year before. And you'll know that many cinemas, because of lockdown, uh, were shut down for months on end. Box office revenues fell from 1.25 billion to uh, just 297 million in 2020. A couple of charts to show you. This is... Remarkable, and this is the impact on the of the pandemic. Number of cinema admissions in the UK a drop from 176 million to 44. Interestingly, before the pandemic, and despite the rise of streaming services such as Netflix, the number of people going to cinemas was increasing, certainly from a fairly low point in 2014. And again, I think that reflects that a number of years when there was a series of blockbuster movies and you know. Uh, makes and remakes and series and things driving people to the cinemas. But the impact of the pandemic on profit and loss has been enormous. Just taking Cineworld as one example, you can see here that Cineworld's profits worldwide in millions of dollars were basically wiped out by a $2.6 billion loss in 2020. So in many ways, the cinema industry uh, in the UK faces many economic challenges. And again, this is worth thinking about as part of your revision. So the surge in demand for streaming services. And it's worth thinking about the extent to which going to see a film live or uh, streaming it, are they substitutes? Are they, are they, are they genuinely substitutes? Uh, are they close substitutes? So does the monthly subscription that Netflix charges impact on the demand for cinema tickets, for example? A second challenge is the fall in cinema advertising. A lot, a lot of businesses are now moving away from that kind of traditional form of, of advertising. Uh, I think a, a longer term problem is the shift towards simultaneous release by the major film companies. So nearly always there's a delay between release in cinema theatres and the videos and films sort of becoming available for streaming. That gap has diminished. And in many cases now, films are being released at the same time. Cinemas are facing rising costs, including the minimum wage. And let's not think about, uh, well, let's not forget, sorry, the cost of living crisis in the UK, a major fall in real disposable incomes in 2022. To what extent might that cause people to cut back on their trips to the cinema? Uh, businesses like Cineworld 
uh, have survived the pandemic, but they are emerging from it with very high levels of debt. So it could be the case that rising interest rates, for example, could prove problematic. Well, my final uh, slide essentially is just to think about how you can use this topic in terms of your revision. Hopefully this has been a useful case study. And I, th I thought of 10, 10 examples where you might link cinemas to your core revision. One, ticket pricing. The obvious one, ticket pricing, price discrimination uh, um, within the cinema industry. Is there a hint of tacit collusion, for example, between the major cinema chains? Do they tend to set similar prices? What are the reasons for that? How do they compete with each other, both in price and non-price terms? There have been some mergers and takeovers within the industry. So what are the benefits and costs of organic versus external growth? Think about the costs in this industry. What are the different fixed and variable costs of running a cinema? And crucially, what are the barriers to entry for new entrants that might, for example, want to, to uh, make a, an entry into the market? To what extent can the major cinema chains achieve economies of scale? Or are there diseconomies of scale? More recently, when, when do you close down a loss-making venue? Is the, is the shutdown point uh, a relevant point to think about? How do smaller independent cinemas manage to survive and thrive? What is it about they, how they operate? And then a couple of things on elasticity. What is the cross-price elasticity from cinema versus streaming? What's the income elasticity of demand for different, for, well, for going to watch films? We, we kind of know that the income elasticity is actually quite different for different groups. And finally, uh, to what extent might government intervention impact on cinema chains? The furlough scheme during the pandemic, the rise in the minimum wage in 2022. So I think you can see here in terms of exam gold that uh, the cinema industry is a really good example. A, it's an example of an oligopoly. So that's great to have. And there's plenty of microeconomics to get your teeth stuck into. There we go. Stay happy, stay positive, stay curious, and hopefully see you again sometime soon.